Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be short and sweet. I'll do a follow-up video with a more intricate design uh, using this technique, but I wanted to give you the basics on how to accomplish this texturized patina effect. So I originally bought these paints about four years ago at Michael's, but I don't think they sell them anymore. My paints dried out, so I ended up having to buy them on Amazon. I did link all of the products in the description box below. We're going to start with a prepped gold spray painted base and once that's dry you go in with the textured paints first. Some of these paints have almost a sea salt kind of texture to them. You will be finger painting with these so you will want a pack of baby wipes or some sort of a wet paper towel or something um, to keep on standby so you don't contaminate your other paint colors. When I start applying these I try to paint a little bit wider at the top and then lessen the width as I move towards the middle of the cup, almost in a V shape. This will help blend the paints around the rim once you're ready to come in with your next color. I do not let my textured paint dry before moving on to the next color because I wanna be able to blend the paints to avoid a harsh line. And this is a very trust the process kind of a technique, so bear with me. Once my textured paints are applied, I hit them with a heat gun and dry them to the touch. It doesn't take very long. I then go in with my non-texturized paints and lay them over the top of the textured paints. Keep in mind you don't want to finger paint these with much pressure because the paint below is still wet um, underneath. You've just dried the top layer uh, and pressing too hard is going to cause that paint to move. You'll notice that you'll now start to see that texture peeking through underneath the uh, non-texturized paints that will remain visible once the cup is fully epoxied. Okay, so I know this does not look the greatest, but like I said, this is a trust the process kind of a video. So bear with me till the end, you'll see the final result. This is not going to be what it looks like. Once I've laid down the brown, burnt orange, teal, and mint colors, I hit it with a heat gun to dry it to the touch again. And then I'm gonna go back in with the texturized paints that I used initially and laid those down over top to tone down the brighter blue and mint colors. Um, this will be laid on very, very lightly. I'm just trying to establish a fade so that the blue and mint colors don't look so harsh.
Once I'm happy with the final look, I'm gonna go over it with the heat gun one more time and then immediately go over it with this goldish, copperish uh, metallic color. This will be the final paint color that I use and it'll really pull the texture from the paints out and tone down those harsh colors. So you probably noticed that I avoided the bottom and I completely forgot to film this, but once this paint's dry, I'm just gonna go over the base with a gloved finger um, with some epoxy and Penny Lane from Peachy Olive Glitters. Um, I'm not too worried about the line being perfect on the bottom rim because this is a rustic look to begin with so I'm not going to worry about taping that off um, trying to get a perfect crisp line for my glitter. Here's a close-up of the cup after it's been dried. You can see the texture in this way better um, and also how well the paints had blended together. Once it was dry, I sprayed the base with Krylon Triple Thick Spray just to make sure my glitter wasn't going to move once I put my epoxy on. Um, I went through with three coats of epoxy before I used my Dremel tool to sand the rim. Um, and then I used a sanding block to make sure that the bottom was going to be smooth where I applied that glitter as well. Um, and then I used one final coat of epoxy. I added in Cullen from Feather Bear Bling. That's just a micro fine silver holographic epoxy additive. A little goes a very, very long way. You do not want to put too much into your epoxy because it will cloud your entire design. That's it for this design. I hope you loved this tutorial and that it inspires you to make something out of your comfort zone. Let me know what you thought in the comments and feel free to ask any questions. If you would like to see behind the scenes or share your creations, be sure to join my makers group on Facebook. It's called Mitten Makers and I've added a link in the description box below and I will see you guys next week.